I want to show how we can determine the molecular mass of a standard when we are working with protein gels. So here we've got, an, say, an SDS polyacrylamide gel, and we have loaded a molecular weight marker here. These are known proteins. And we also have a sample where we have two bands of uh, unknown size. And our job is to find out what is the approximate size of these two bands. And we have this molecular uh, weight marker here that we can use for this purpose. So we run our gel and of course because we are using an SDS uh, gel our proteins are all negatively charged so we know that here is the starting point of the gel and here we would also have the negative electrode and down here we've got the positive electrode we know that when we have a setup like that, the very large molecules would dis uh, travel only a short distance, small molecules travel a long distance. And what we can do is for our marker proteins, we can create a nice standard curve here. And the way we will uh, do this is just simply by measuring with a ruler the distance how far these individual bands of the marker protein have traveled in the gel. So we place the ruler right at the beginning of the gel. This is usually where the well uh, ends or where the uh, separation gel starts. And we can then directly look at how far our different marker proteins have traveled. So here we've got the different molecular weight markers. These are just approximate. We need to be absolutely clear about that. It's not exactly 180, it's roughly 180 kilodalton. And we could read this as a roughly probably 0.3 centimeters. So this 180 kilodalton protein uh, migrated about 0.3 centimeters. Now the 135 uh, kilodalton protein, I would say that migrated about 0.8 centimeters. And I have already uh, done these measurements for all the marker proteins. And I've also done the measurements for the unknown protein so, for example, the first band here, it's a little bit above the 48 kilodalton. So it must be a little bit larger than 48 kilodalton. And we can find this as 3.9 centimeters. That is what I got on the ruler. And for this band here, we get about 4.7 centimeters. So how can we now uh, make a nice standard curve? So... Uh, first of all, what we can do is we can plot the molecular mass of our standard uh, against the migration. Let's quickly do that. So I highlight the cells here and I insert a scatter plot. So here is my scatter plot and I just uh, do it something like that. And I get, um, well, a graph for it. But uh, let's just quickly label things. So, for example, on the x-axis, we would have the, um, the molecular mass, molecular mass, and that would be in kilodalton. And here on the y-axis, we have the migration and that would be in centimeters. And that would be our standard graph or standard curve. Well, actually, it's not a very good standard curve because we don't really like to work with uh, curves. 
we want to have a straight line because only that will allow us to extrapolate numbers. So let's get rid of this uh, graph here and let's think about how we can actually convert this graph. Let's get rid of this how we can convert this graph into something that gives us indeed a, a straight line or more or less a straight line. And there's a simple trick to it. What we need to do is instead of plotting the molecular mass as it is, we pro plot the logarithm of the molecular mass. So we will plot log of molecular mass. And uh, we can use any log, but uh, we usually would uh, go for uh, log to the base of 10. So this is quite easy, it's log of 10. And we just simply take this number here and calc let Excel do the calculation. I ask Excel to do all the other calculations here and I get my log of the molecular mass. Um, and if I plot this now, I plot my log versus the migration here. And let's see what this looks like. So we go again, we do a scatter plot. And what we see is, that this now looks much more like a linear uh, relationship. We can get the trend line. So we get the trend line for that. And that is the line of best fit. It looks pretty good for um, line of best fit. We can even display the R square value and the equation on the chart. So here are our numbers. I make it a little bit larger that we can nicely see that. So let's do that as a black and let's increase the font size a little bit that we can do that. So the R square value is 0 0.09. And before we do anything, we should probably uh, also label the, uh, the, the axes here. So here we've got our standard curve and here we have, um, let's just simply label that by hand, it's easier. Here we've got the, the logarithm to the base of 10 of the molecular mass here. And on the x-axis, we still have the migration in centimeters. Migration in centimeters. And that gives us a very nice straight line. It's a little bit, a few points are not exactly on the point, but uh, that is uh, not terribly surprising because, uh, you know, we just use this ruler and in fact, it should show a little bit of an S-curve. The R square value is 0 0.99. So 99% of our migration measurements can actually be explained by this value here. So what we can do now is we can take our uh, values for the unknown uh, band, so 3.9, that would be uh, roughly here, and we can try and figure out what the molecular mass is. So uh, we can just simply uh, calculate that. So here we've got the straight line calculation, so y We can say that y equals, let's just simply write something how we can do the calculation, y equals mx plus c, the y-intercept. And we've got these numbers here. And uh, what we can now figure out uh, is what would happen 
when we um, make x the subtract of that. So x, that would be our log of 10 molecular mass. x equals, I bring that to this side, the y value minus c divided by the gradient. Now for our first x, we have a y value of 3.9. So let's write this down here. x for the first band equals a y value of 3.9 here. So 3.9 minus the uh, value for the intercept 16.941 1, and we divide this by the gradient that is negative 7 point six one four seven six one four seven and that we can just simply do uh, again in Excel. We can do this uh, very easily. Let's do it up here. So here we've got equals 3.9 minus the value for the intercept. That was 16.941. And we divide this by the gradient, which was negative 7.6147. So that gives us an, a value of 1.712. Now we need to be uh, aware that this is actually the log of the molecular mass. So what we need to do now is do the inverse operation of the molecular of, of the log and which is 10 to the power of so equals 10 to the power of what we've just calculated here that's this value and we get a value of 51.6 kilodalton so i would round that up to 52 kilodalton now i see we are uh, really, we are a little bit above 48, exactly as it should be, as we have predicted. So our first band here, this would be probably in the range of, say, around, around 52 kilodalton. And we can do that for the other value here, the smaller band. So uh, all we need to do is calculate 4.7 minus 16.941 over negative 7.6147. And again, uh, we can do this here. Uh, let's quickly calculate that equals, we want this here, equals 4.7, we need to have a bracket here to do this first, minus the y, the y-intercept minus 16, point nine four one and divided by the gradient and that was negative seven point six one four seven and here we get uh, the next x value here again we need to be careful this x value is the logarithm of the molecular mass so we have to convert that by taking what we just calculated 
10 to the power of this value here and we get a molecular mass of 40.5 and again I would be very careful I would probably say that we've got a molecular mass here of around the area of 41 kilodalton and when we do something like this, then there's always a, a certain element of uh, variability in it. So I would probably say as the solution, the we've got the bands in the range of 52 plus minus, well, maybe 4 to 5 kilodalton. That would be within the error margin. And we've got 41 plus minus roughly 4 kilodalton. That's uh, roughly around 10%. So here uh, we've, we can see that we are in the right ballpark. It's larger than the 35, but it's smaller than the 48 uh, range. And with this method, we can very nicely and easily use our molecular mass or our standard to find out unknown um, sizes of proteins. The important message is that instead of directly plotting the molecular mass against the migration, we plot the log of the molecular mass against the migration. So I hope this makes sense and thank you very much for watching.